What is Rust? Rust is what you see here on this screen. To be precise, this is uh, Rust code. Rust is a compiled programming language known for its safety, concurrency, performance. Okay, this is a nice definition, but uh, what does it mean? Most important, why? <laughs> like, this is the first question. Why should I care about learning Rust? First of all, it's a really fast, uh, a really powerful, and I would say also uh, exciting and fascinating programming language. Probably you heard about Rust, and this was also my case. Uh, the first time that I heard it was about, it was for system language, a language that is used to create frameworks, create uh, operating systems, creating software that is also used for to develop other software. So it's not like JavaScript or to create some uh, web apps. Rust is intended to be useful, especially for systems and not applications. But there is a but. Web development. This is where I decided to learn Rust because you can use Rust, for example, to create a backend. I created a web server already, but we are, of course, here we are from the basics. The reason why we could be interested in learning Rust is that it could be very interesting in the, in the future. We can learn Rust as web developers. We can decide to do a backend in Rust, do a web server, and then we can also try a couple of CLI programs, but uh, by learning how to make a web server in Rust, we'll understand the syntax, the grammar. And this is our goal. Our goal is to learn Rust while we do something more practical and less boring. And last, it's for blockchain, for the bad guys. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Rust is used for smart contract development. And at some point, I will create some content to use Rust for blockchain technologies. Now a disclaimer. Rust is not beginner friendly. I love Rust, but I would still not recommend to learn Rust as your first programming language. I would recommend more JavaScript, Python, other languages. Not because it's not technically possible, it's for sure it's possible, but I think the reason is that many courses, included this one, when we teach Rust, we make some references to other languages. We'll see this soon, like as we do in Node.js, as we do in Django, as we do in in PHP and Laravel, this is your opportunity to leave this video and stop watching. Go on. <laughs> so there are a couple of killer features in Rust that might be very, very interesting. Rust doesn't have a garbage collector. If you know what is a garbage collector, great. Otherwise, this is a short definition. A garbage collector is basically a system that uses a language to free some memory, some unused memory in a program. Some languages, they have a garbage collection. Some languages, like C, they make you handle memory and it's an absolute nightmare. I done this uh, during the college time and it's really uh, a nightmare. Rust is different from both of them. And here I had my first moment when I said, okay, wait, 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 what, what does it mean? It means that uh, Rust checks when needed, it removes something from the memory. We can still handle the memory by ourselves. This is how all, at least the, all the low level programming languages should behave. In the future, we will have more programming languages that handle the memory like Rust. It only checks and removes memory when needed. The second Rust killer feature, developer experience. I want you to raise your hand if you ever experienced something like this. We got used to this because we were thought that uh, the struct trace is a mess, that we should spend 15 minutes to understand what is, you see, <laughs> Uh, to see, understand what's going on. I spent sometimes hours just to check a, a, an error like this uh, without understanding what the hell was going on. <laughs> Rust compiler is mind blowing. It's, uh, I would say, game changing. Once you understand how Rust compiler works, it's so good that you'll ne probably never go back again. Cargo is Rust package manager, similar to npm for Node.js pip for python, composer for php. And if you go on https slash slash crates.io, you have a very similar experience. In this lesson, we will do installation, 
Hello World with the Rust C, so with the Rust compiler, which is something that we'll do only this time. Then we'll do a Hello World using Cargo, and then we'll see the difference between how we can do a dev, a debug, and release a build. I want really to focus on the process. We are here at the basics, at the core fundamentals of Rust and how it does work. Don't skip the next part, otherwise when we'll do some lessons later, you might get lost and not understand uh, what's going on, why are we doing cargo new, cargo build, uh, I will not repeat this every time, of course. So we are doing something to learn the core concepts. To install Rust on the MacBook, we have this, uh, and let's just uh, try. Info downloading installer, one, proceed with installation default. Now I want to reset this, of course. And now let's try again Rust C dash dash version. And we have Rust installed on our MacBook. I want to show you a couple of more commands. One is Rust up update. Of course, this will be super fast, but you can use it to update to the latest version of Rust. Something interesting is Rust up docs. If we do Rust up docs, we have a local version of the documentation. I want to check how long does it take to uninstall Rust from my machine. Rust up, self, uninstall. Yes, one, two, two seconds. To install Rust on Windows, Rust install, installation. So you go here and you click download Rust up. This should already recognize that you are on Windows. You click here and during the installation process, you will be prompted to install also this Visual Studio C++ build tools. Do it. Rust Playground. So if you just want to type some Rust code or maybe you want to follow along and uh, in these or upcoming videos, you can go on Rust Playground. This is the link. I leave a link. And then this is the Hello World spoiler of what we'll type. And you can see here the the standard output. I want to make an example of a hello world from scratch and then we'll use cargo. Pay attention here because we will do a couple of important steps that we are not going to repeat for the whole course. I am in any folder and I do code dot or you can open this of course with any IDE you want. Let's create a single file touch main dot rs. Check at the top right and we are in this uh, main uh, file. We can uh, create the first function we want our goal is to just to type a hello world plus a bonus that we will do soon in a couple of minutes fn main and then here we can do something we can get what the github copilot is suggesting it's almost uh, self-explanatory print ln exclamation mark hello world the only thing a bit strange here is this exclamation mark the exclamation mark means that this is not just a function but it's what is in rust is called macro this is for optimization and it's basically for metaprogramming we are not going into the details here but it's basically to make the code more reusable and more efficient if you try just print ln it also works now what Every time I learn any new programming language, here I'm stuck. I say, what should I do now? Click uh, some buttons. So what's, uh, what is the next step? And we will do this together now. We will compile. I told you that Rust is a compiled language. We can just type Rust C and then the name of the file, Rust C main.rs. You see, we now have three files, and I'm very curious about this main.exe. Let's try to execute it. Dot slash main. It's very similar on Linux and Mac, by the way. And we have hello world. I want to try something a bit strange. Let's say that I want the program to wait for three seconds before stopping. Let's try to trust the GitHub Copilot. And by the way, the comments in, on Rust are very easy. Double slash and slash star. We can say wait for three seconds. Let's see if GitHub Copilot will help us. STD, double double colon. <laughs> Not a huge fan of this syntax. Thread double double colon, sleep, again std, time, duration, from sex, three. And let's try to run the code again. Let's see what will happen. 
Okay, it didn't wait three seconds. Why? We need to compile it again, of course, and then let's try to run it again. One, two, three, stop. I want to show you something cool because we have this executable file. So what if now I go on the Explorer? You see, I have this executable in the workspace Rust Hello World, and then I double click this main.exe file. Let's see. Hello World, one, two, three, closed. Rust creates executables that you can run on this operating system. Of course, you can create, of course, also for Mac OS and Linux. This does mean that you don't need Rust to run a Rust program. It's, uh, you, you create uh, executable like, uh, like a charm. This was our first example. Keep that in mind. So we created a file. We compiled with a Rust C space the name of the file and then we execute it. Is there a better way or let's say a more common way to build and create a Rust project? The answer is yes. Now let's create a hello world but using cargo. This is a more mainstream solution. I removed all the files. It's not really necessary but I wanted to start really clear. How can we initialize a new project? Cargo new. Hello world. When we create a project in Rust, we don't use a camel case, but we tend to use a snake case with underscore all uh, uh, non-capital. This will create a, a folder inside this folder. Of course, I need to remember to step into the folder. We have some files here. We have this cargo.toml file. TOMS stands for TOMS, Obvious Minimal Language. It has name, version, edition, and then we have a list of dependencies. So this is very similar to package.json, but instead of having a JSON file, we have this file with this format. If you can't see this highlighted and you are coding along, it's because you need an extension, even better toml. We have a .git ignore file, and you can also see if we type git status, that this initialized a git repository. And now this src, Folder. Let's see what is inside this src folder. Click just a file called main.rs. It's a simple fn main println hello world. I love this. I think this project initialization is perfect because we have a single file for dependencies, a git ignore file with initializing the git repository, a source folder that will contain all the source code so we can keep the readme and docker files and everything else outside, with a single file with a single function that we can test. Perfect. This is perfection. There is another command called cargo init in case you want to create the project inside this folder. Here we have another folder because I, I typed cargo new. To build this project, we can just type cargo build. Be sure to check at the top right. Okay, let's read here. Compiling finished. And here you can see at the top right a folder called target with a folder called debug and other files. So we have this and this. But if we go here in this folder debug, you see we have a hello world.exe file. This is similar to what we did before, but it has been cargo that created this here hello world underscore exe file in the debug folder in the target folder. Cargo is creating a structure, but it's similar to when we do Rust C and the name of the file. Very, very important. And now, how can we run this project? We can just type dot slash in my case, because I'm on a Windows machine, target debug hello world. And we have the hello world. It's very important to understand what happened before and what is happening now. It's very similar, but you see Cargo is helping us. This is how we will do this through the whole course, the whole series. There is an extension that might be interesting to use. Rust Analyzer. Here, enable. We have something here at the top. Run the bug. You see this? If I click here on the run, check the terminal. Run. Okay, finished and running. This does two things. It compiles and it builds. Can you do this also directly from the command line? Usually I am a, a fan of the command line. Yes, you can just type cargo run. Finished and running. It didn't compile because there was no change. Let's say that I change this with hello cargo and we do cargo run again. Compiling, finished and run. Let's say that I 
do a typo. And I try to do cargo check. Cargo check is a command that just checks if the code can compile, but without producing the executable. Bam. Oh, we have an error. src main rs25, line 2, okay. Pretel n, okay, I found the mistake, but let's hear. Help, a macro with a similar name exists printl n. Wow. This is, of course, a trivial example. But think how much time you might save in your life as a programmer if you'd have a compiler that tells you a similar name of a function. Let's just fix it. Print ln with an exclamation mark. Save, of course. Let's try to do cargo check again. And now it's happy. I want to show you one file here, which is cargo.log file. It's a file automatically generated and it's not intended for manual editing and it it takes versions for dependencies. Don't touch this cargo.log file. Let's do a release build. Cargo build, but this time dash dash release. Check here at the top right, compiled, finished, and we have a hello world.exe file, but it's inside this release folder. Now we can type target release hello world. Hello, cargo, because we changed this to cargo. And this is the end of the first explanation and uh, hello world for Rust. What did we do in this uh, short lesson? One, how to install Rust on Linux, Mac, and Windows. A hello world using the Rust compiler called Rust C to compile a single file in a single executable file. And then we used Cargo to initialize, compile, run a Rust program. We also checked two extensions, even better TOML and Rust Analyzer. We also tried Cargo Check, which is a command to check if a Rust program has some errors, but without producing the executable. And last, how to use Cargo Build dash dash release to create a production-ready executable.